Welcome to the Fabergé. First I'll show you the gatehouses, which there are three of. Each have an airlock to prevent anyone from going deep, and to entice raiders to go through the furnace wall instead of the gatehouses. We have peaks on either side looking back behind the furnace wall, and when the walls are destroyed, it opens up this retake. The triangle floor at half height prevents your head from getting shot, so this is a great place to defend from. Enter the compound through the double doors. Here, the high furnaces block entry if the compound walls get destroyed. If you're on console, you can fit two furnaces here, but on PC, you can block it off with just one, as electric furnaces are more useful. The compound is designed to only need six turrets to cover all angles. This is due to the update of last year, where we can only have 12 on each base. But if you're playing modded or console, there's plenty of space to add more, and the chain link prevents them from being bowed out by grubs. To combat the turret update, there's also a funnel compound, with well-placed shotgun traps to catch out raiders. As the compound is sectioned off, this will help you keep control. Now on three sides of the base, we have these breach peaks. As the base is three-sided, the compound is two, with three gatehouses and three breach peaks. But there are six ways to enter the base. On three sides, you have this type of entrance, and this really tight peak here enables you to see all the way down to the gatehouse. Along with one more retake right outside the entrance for the furnace wall then enter the base through the double door airlock. Right here on either side we have breach peaks. Not only will these help you regain control of a compound, but they also act as an early game shooting floor, so you can defend while the base is still being built. Beyond that we have a shell which wraps around the entire core. On three sides we have the main entrances with breach peaks, and on the other three sides we have nine beds for our compound respawns. By removing this window, we also have retakes back into the shell. This peak is really tight, making it very difficult for raiders to see you. And on top of that, we have a ladder hatch chute straight up to the shooting floor. Not only will this help you respawn and defend faster, but you can also get down to loot bodies and seal. And just outside of the compound bedroom, we have a mini china wall. This gives you great angles around your compound, and you can also guard the gatehouse. Going through the double doors, you can enter and exit the base on these sides too. The starter is accessible through the ground floor shell. There's plenty of space inside for bags for your whole team, 13 large boxes, a workbench, furnaces, and of course the main TC, which is located behind this vending machine to make the raid cost as high as possible. But we also have today's sponsor. A brand new site is launched, rustmagic.com. They have six great games, including Case Battles, Upgrader, complete with two spinners, Roulette, Minesweeper, and a truly unique game called Flipper, where you can change the amount of coins to flip for different win sizes. And this month, they're giving away 50,000 coins through their Easter leaderboard. So get involved before time runs out. You can deposit through skins, credit card, PayPal, or crypto. And when you're done, they have a huge selection of skins to withdraw from. But if you don't want skins, then you can cash out with crypto instantly. They also have tons of rewards, including a free rain system, daily free cases, and a rake bank system. You can use my code CROW for free coins to try out the site but you must be 18 or over. Cheers, Rust Magic. To continue the tour, we'll go upstairs to access the open core, which is on the second floor. Use either of the breach peaks to get up here, and here you can also fit a couple of beds. And next to the entrance, we have a retake. This here is my favorite open core that I've ever made. The six equally large loot rooms make it really aesthetic. Each one has space for six large boxes, and are protected by three metal walls of honeycomb. We also have some extra loot in the floor, along with some electric furnaces, and six more boxes under these triangles. The open core is overlooked by plenty of peaks along with these turrets which look through the ramps. And if you want, I'll show you how to add more turrets in the tutorial. And the best thing about this open core is the bunkers. Placing a triangle roof here opens up the armored wall, revealing four large boxes and a battery. As they're right next to the open core, it's really easy to deposit your loot. There are three in total, one on either side of the base. Use the jump up to access the top floor. Here we have our ramp peaks to look down into the open core. There are three of these, one on each side of the base. And here we have a respawn with a low wall retake. And right next to the beds, we have a retake into the shooting floor, which is designed to be one way, so raiders can't use it against you. We even have a hidden locker down the back here. This is repeated on all three sides of the base to give six respawns. And you also find three more in the center here with a locker next to them. Complete with a retake to take back your bedroom floor. Access the shooting floor through one of six exits. On these three sides, we have what's called offset peaks, which are attached to the base and don't require a wide gap build out, making them easy to build and more compact. There's also a ramp peak to survey the surrounding area along with a roof retake. And don't worry, you can't fall down any of these gaps. The other three sides of the base are wide gapped, giving you a great variety of peaks and making sure that you don't have any blind spots around the compound. 
and we have triangle ramp peaks on these sides with angles all around the compound and far away along with another roof retake. Go back over to the mobility chute to access the roof. On the way up we have another retake into the shooting floor and onto the roof. Again there are three of these, one on all sides of the base. And here we have some roof respawns with three beds in each and a kit to protect it behind the window in the vending machines. They also have these nice retakes on either side. These bedroom modules are repeated on all three sides of the base. The roof itself is protected by three turrets, which are located under these half wall modules, making them almost impossible for helis to rocket out. If you want to sacrifice those open core turrets, you can add more up here. The surrounding area of the roof has some simple peaks looking out and around the compound, along with these, which give you some really nice far away angles. To get off the roof quickly, you can jump down onto these waterfalls. Lastly, I'll show you the externals. These are bunkered and honeycombed to make them 12 rockets to grief. Inside you have space for a battery or some loot and the TC. But as the bunkers are free-handed, I won't be showing how to put them in this tutorial, as it's definitely a skill that you need to learn on a building server. So instead, I'll just show you how to build some normal ones. You can find a separate tutorial for the bunkered ones in the description. And here we have the build cost, upkeep and footprint of the base. Not bad, considering the size of this thing. And you'll be pleased to know that the main TC can fit up to 36 hours of materials in. And join my Discord if you have any problems building it. And if you're going to build it, why not subscribe? And if you're already subscribed, why not check out my YouTube members, where you can get access to bases earlier than everyone else, and even play a wipe with me. Start off the build by placing a triangle, surrounding it with squares, then in a clockwise motion, place two triangles between the base. This will help you place the TC correctly. Now surround the footprint with walls, leaving a space on this triangle for a door. Then seal in the roof with triangles and squares. The starter will be built out of stone and then upgraded. After that, the base will be built in its final grade. So upgrade when you can. We're gonna put the TC next to the door in this triangle. It must be placed correctly to access it behind the vending machine. It must be this distance from the front of the foundation and all the way to the right. To make it easier, you can upgrade the foundation to metal before placing the TC and check that it's two dots away from the front of the foundation. This can also be done with the Brutalist and Adobe skins if you have them. Always remember to lock your TC and place a single door and your vending machine. This can be done at any time. To place the vending machine, gently glide it in as far as it will go. And to stop the rotating command coming up, remember to put something in the vending machine. If you're worried about bricking your base, just practice it on a build server or put the TC behind a window instead. Next, place your airlock here. And then build your three loot rooms with wall frames here. Put walls either side to partition them. And then build your shelves. Put a twig square in this one to bridge over the shelf. To fit all your bags in the starter, you need to place the tier 2 in this corner before the triangle shelf. Now we'll upgrade the entire core and add the finishing touches. To expand the base, first add squares to the side of each triangle. And then between them, add two triangles like so. So far the footprint should look like this, symmetrical on all sides. Locate this triangle gap between the two squares and wall stack it. To do that, go up by eight squares and put a triangle on the end. For this, I'll be using three-way symmetry to make the build less repetitive. Next, remove all these foundations apart from the last triangle that you placed. Then build back towards the base with triangle half moon shapes.
and at the end place a square with a triangle on either side of it. Then remove all the twig. As this section isn't connected to the base, we need to connect it to an external. So build up by two twig squares, and then a metal one. Then place down three triangle foundations for the gatehouse, one twig triangle and three twig squares. Then place three triangles for the external TC. If you want to build the bunkered ones, check out the tutorial in the description. On this triangle, build two half walls for the disconnecting mechanism, and then finish the external like so. Then on this triangle, build two door frames and a window. And attach it to the external TC with frames. If your main TC gets destroyed in a raid, then you'll need to disconnect the externals. To do this, place down a twig foundation and a roof here. After replacing your main TC, just remove this and reconnect it. Next we're going to connect these foundations to the base, so remove the twig and build the wide gap foundations with a raised triangle here and four more triangle foundations. If you can't place the raised one due to the terrain, use a low one with a half wall. Next place four frames right here. Then on the raised triangle place a window. And on the square, place a door frame and a wall, and then connect them together with a floor and a frame. Now it's all connected together and won't decay. Repeat this step on the other two sides of the base as shown. If you can't remember how to do it, just rewind the video and watch this section again. Next we're going to wall set the base again on these sides. So in this gap, place a twig triangle and go out by seven squares. Not eight this time, seven. And then place a triangle on the end. Remove all the foundations apart from the last triangle. And build back towards the base with triangles. These last two can be upgraded to metal. Then remove all the twig. And after that, build a square on the left, a triangle in the middle, a twig square to the right, and then a metal square. Removing the twig one. At the moment, this section will look like this, but it's not connected to the base and needs an external. But to improve progression, you can temporarily connect it to the main base with a wall here and a twig triangle roof. If you've got no other wood on the base, you can check the main TC to make sure that it's connected. I think this is a good idea so you can focus your materials on finishing the shell, but you shouldn't log off until it's properly connected to an external TC, which we'll do after the shell is finished. As shown, repeat this on all three sides of the base. Next, go to the roof and place frames in every slot around the shell. Then build the ceiling with square and triangle floors. Next, put a door and a door frame here to seal off the shell. Do this on all three sides. Now in these sections, put a door frame in the middle. And either side of that, put a low wall and a half wall. You can block it off with the rug for now if you like. Do this again on all sides of the base until it looks like this. Next we'll build the breach peaks, so temporarily remove this triangle roof. Place a full wall here, followed by a half wall. Place a twig square on top, 
which will make it so you can place a triangle through the wall here without grading it to metal. Remove the twig and then finish the breech peak. Remember to put a square frame before placing the roof. When this breech peak is done, remember to reconnect it with a triangle roof. Then build a breech peak on this side in the same way. Again, remember this triangle floor as it can't be placed later. Next, place a wall frame here. Only after you've built the external should you replace the triangle roof with a wall frame here. I just noticed I placed this triangle incorrectly. It should be connected to the one in the middle, with no gap in between. Then build your airlock with two double doors and a window. When completed, this section should look like this. Repeat this again on all three sides of the base, remembering these triangle floors. Next on these sections, we're going to place two triangle ceilings, then a window frame on either side, which must be filled in with a glass window to prevent raiders from using it against you. Put a wood triangle on this left hand side. This will be removed later for the triangle ladder hat shoot, so don't upgrade it. On the other side we can put a stone triangle, then build walls all around and put down ceilings. You can put boxes on this wood triangle. And you can also fit two small boxes here. When done, this section should look like this. Repeat this again on the other two sides of the base. And remember to leave that triangle wood so you can remove it later. After that, build this section so you can retake your roof. These walls here should be left stone, then upgraded and rotated so the soft sides face you when the open core is built. Repeat this on the other two sides of the base. Next, I'm going to show you how to build the external on these sides. First, place all these twig pieces. Then upgrade all the triangles and remove the squares. Then put ceilings either side of the airlock. and connect the foundations to the base with window frames. Then add three more triangle foundations. If you raise the middle one, you can actually place a turret on it if you're playing modded or console. If not, then just place a half wall with a window on top. Before you build the external, remember to remove this triangle roof. Then place down two square foundations, and then three triangle ones. And build the external in the same way as we did before. As we're connecting to a window, we need to add a frame here. And then connect it with two squares. To disconnect it, you must place the twig square here, followed by the triangle roof.
again repeat this step on the other three sides of the base. And of course remember to remove the triangle roof before placing the external TC. Before building the compound we'll finish off these breach peaks. If you didn't place the raised foundation then you can put a locker behind these triangle roofs. Then build the vinyl sections. And do the same again on this side. Repeat this again on the opposite two sides of the base. After that we'll finish the gatehouses. Again repeat the step on all three sides of the base. Now we can place our compound walls. Start off next to the breach peaks and make sure they're placed as close as possible to the half walls behind them. Then place the gatehouse ones looking over to check the gap. When completed, your compound will look like this. After that, put barricades on top of the gatehouses and breach beaks. Make sure these are overhanging slightly to prevent grubs from building over. Now I'll show you how to put down your large furnaces. First place these twig foundations. If you want two furnaces in each section, place this one first, tucking it into the corner as much as you can. And of course make sure that it's as high as possible. Then you could place the second one here. Alternatively, if you only need one furnace in each section, then build these parts first. When placing this furnace, make sure that it's as close as possible to the window and the half wall. Then do the same again on this side. If you've only got three turrets for now, place them above the gatehouses, as they give the best coverage. At the moment the compound should look like this. Next I'm going to show you how to complete the compound. This can be done at any time in the build. So you want to continue building the base itself, and come back to this section later. Now we'll build the mini china wall. Remember that you can put a turret on the raised foundation if you want to.
There are three mini channel wall sections on the base, so repeat this step again on the other two sides. Next we'll build the funnel parts of the compound. Make sure this double door is open at all times. These low walls can stay wood as they only prevent players from camping underneath them. Next finish the breech peaks with door frames and ceilings. You can actually fit a bed in here if you want to. Here put two half walls and more ceilings to put a turret underneath. Like I said, make sure that these doors are always open and place shotgun traps here. Complete the compound by repeating these steps on all three sides of the base. To build the open core, first we'll start off by building honeycomb here. And then we'll build the bunkers. These can be upgraded at any point. Place a frame from this angle. It must be upgraded to HQM. If rotated correctly, it will form this large corner which will cover a gap. Then build the shelves. Then put a full wall here facing backwards. It must be facing this way to seal a gap on the left hand side, which we'll cover in a minute. Open the bunker with a triangle roof and place a floor here attaching to the ceiling inside. If you're having trouble doing this, you can do it from inside the bunker. You'll see that there are two slots available. You want it attached to the one closest to you. Next build walls on either side, these can be upgraded and rotated later. And then your door frame. Finish off the ceiling with a triangle frame here and one in the centre. Then build the jump up, but never place a door frame here, otherwise you'll break the bunker. Repeat this step on the other three sides of the base. This is the gap that I was talking about earlier, we'll seal it now. Start off on the left hand side of the bunker and place two full walls here. Place a half wall on the right with the hard side facing you. Then a half wall on the left with the soft side facing you. Then place a full wall here with a half wall above it. The half wall must be upgraded to the same material as the bunker is in right now. As the opening wall of the bunker and this half wall are connected, it closes the gap. Now we'll finish off the loop room with two full walls to the left, a half wall at the front, a wall frame, and a ceiling. Then we'll build the other loop room with two full walls here and two more full walls on top. The left hand side one must have the hard side facing you. Then place two more full walls, then place another one here and two more to finish the loop room. Then place a half wall below and a wall frame and the ceiling. In front of the two loop rooms put low walls and then ceilings on top. Remember to place the boxes before the triangles. Eventually you should upgrade these floors to HQM and to finish the loop rooms place ramps facing you. Then two twig square floors, put triangles through the walls, remove the squares and replace them with triangles. In the right hand loop room place another twig triangle through the wall. This is necessary for the locker to sit on. After repeating this step on the other two sides, the open core will look like this. Then place half walls in the centre, and then square frames attaching to those, and then ramps in the floor. If you're having trouble placing these ramps, then you have to remove the boxes in the core below. In the centre here, you can place furnaces, or put a triangle floor down for your level 3. Now the open core will look like this, and we can start sealing it off. First place squares here, and a triangle in the centre, the triangle is outside to match the core of the base.
Then on the right hand side of each bunker, place a frame and a ramp. And you can remove this twig inside and seal it off. Make sure to attach this triangle to the outside wall. And then here in the respawn, we'll build a low wall. To build the windows for the shooting floor retake, first attach a triangle to the left hand outside wall. Then remove it and attach it to the right hand wall. If you don't do this, then it'll be tricky to place the windows as the base is wall stacked. Remember to upgrade this triangle for the locker to sit on. Place the locker as far back as possible. Then build a window here with another embrasure and seal it with a triangle floor. Then build a frame inside here before placing the beds. When finished, this section should look like this. Repeat these steps on the other two sides of the base. Now we'll build the entrance to this floor. On the right, put a half wall and a low wall for a shooting floor retake. And a half wall here with a window on top for the roof retake. You won't be able to put a frame here because of the bunker. Next build three frames here and attach triangle ceilings to them. The gaps will be sealed when the roof exit's finished. Repeat these steps on the other two sides of the base to form three exits. Next behind the ramp build two full walls. Then place a frame and attach a triangle to it. Then put three wall frames in the middle. Behind the respawn, put two more half walls. Look down to place them. Then build a full wall here. Attach a square to it and then a triangle to it. Then finish off the ceiling with a triangle and a square. And place down your doors. And lastly, build a half wall and a low wall here. Then repeat this step on the other two sides of the base. You can seal in the rest of the ceiling now if you want to. I leave it open to build the next part so you can see better. Build a full wall between the two triangles. On the right hand one will have the locker. Do this on all three sides. Then next to it we'll build the retake. You can put small boxes or barrels on the triangle. Then put wall frames in the middle and finish the ceiling. After that, finish the roof exits and the honeycomb. Build a full wall on either side with a window in the middle for the vending machines. Do this again on the other two sides of the base. Next below it, build the honeycomb. After placing this square floor, seal in the locker with a triangle one, as it also make the retake one way. Then do the same again on this side. Repeat this on the other three sides of the base. Next, you can soft side this wood triangle. And then build three full walls here. With two more in the center. Seal off the square and the right hand triangle. And then put a triangle frame with a leather hatch in the left hand one. Then place three frames here. Seal in the roof and then place two window frames. When completed, this section will look like this. Repeat this step again on the other two sides of the base. If you want to add more turrets to the open core, then you can put two triangle frames here 
upgrade into metal and place a turret in the middle. To build the shooting floor, you must have completed the compound already. For the wide gap sections, place a wall frame here, a half wall and a frame above the door, two frames above this window, and three frames around the breach peak. Above the door, put a half wall and a frame again. And on this window behind you, put two more frames. And then one more here on the left-hand side. Inside the mini china wall, place three metal frames on these triangles. You can upgrade the top ones from upstairs. At this point, the white gap sections will look like this. Repeat again on the other two sides of the base. After that, we'll build the offset peaks. So jump on top of here and build up by two frames. And as always, repeat this step again on the other two sides of the base. To finish the wide gap, place two frames here, then your triangle floors, and three frames in front of those. Make sure to rotate the left and right ones so you can fit the triangle roofs. Then build windows on top. It'll be much easier if you place your embrasures now before the triangle roofs. And you can put a triangle floor here if you want to fit a turret in the shooting floor. After that, place your triangle roofs. Put a wall frame on either side. Attach one ceiling to the door frame and then a ceiling to each wall frame here. Then place triangle roofs above the windows low walls here, and then floors. On the left hand side place a window and a floor. Remember to place your embrasure before the floor otherwise you'll have to do it from outside the base. Then place two windows here with triangle floors attaching to the base. Put a wall frame here with a door to section off the shooting floor. Next jump on top of this window. Place another wall frame followed by a window. Place the embrasure before the roof and place a square here with a square frame. But before you seal it off with the roof piece, remember to do this. There was a twig floor here followed by a frame to the left. This seals off a gap in the shooting floor, so it's very important. Then place your triangle roof. Now do the exact same thing on the other side. When finished, the wide gap sections would look like this. Again, repeat these steps on the other two sides of the base. Now I'll finish off the offset peaks. Start off by attaching two triangle floors to the base. Then place windows on the right and the left. And half walls around the centre part, with windows on top. Then build the ceiling. Place a square frame here and the roof piece. This should be upgraded to one of the new building skins to open up the gap. If you don't have them or you're on console, I'll show you a different way to do this later. When completed, this section looked like this. Then do it again on the other two sides of the base. So if you don't have any of the new building skins and you want to open up the gap in the roof piece, place a triangle frame and a roof here on both sides. For some reason, this is the weird rust mechanic that opens up this gap. Lastly, we're going to build the roof. We'll start off with the bedrooms. Place two full walls here with a window in the middle. You can put two vending machines with kits inside behind it. Then finish it off with windows, a door and a roof. You can place shotgun traps or turrets under here.
When completed, all three bedrooms will look like this. And to finish it off, place ramps all around. Either side of this square roof retake, we'll put roof pieces. And put two more above these windows. And on the square we'll put the turret pod, so build up by two frames. You can use square spiral stairs to go up to this level, then place a square frame, a metal triangle floor at the back and surround with half walls. The turret can be placed at any point in the build. Now this section is done, repeat it on the other two sides of the base. After that, finish off these peaks with low walls on either side. And when done, your roof peaks will look like this. And if you're on modded or console, you can place more turrets here. For the SAM sites, I recommend putting them above the bedrooms. To prevent them from being bowed out, you can place roofs around them, but they might make it annoying to land a scrappy. Lastly, for a quick way down off the roof, you can place a frame here with a triangle roof. And the base is done, so congratulations if you made it this far, and if it served you well, make sure to leave a like and a comment. I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.